let's talk a little bit about your relationship with Oakley. So how did that all start? How did that all come about? You approached them or? No, they approached me and um, I found out the story. I, I, I have good memory actually. Okay. I, I call, him, call him Bill Rogers, a chubby Bill Rogers, or marathon runner, Dave Rogers. But uh, he came up probably November, December of 84. And I had a prototype, I mean, pre-production prototype, but it was just like this. Actually, it was really pre-production because I don't think it was like, you know, the, 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 it was probably two months later they had it in production. This was coming off, but it was essentially this glass. I mean, it is this glass. Actually, it was, and this is a pre-production eye shade. Actually, I know that it actually had an insert, so it came up, cut it up, pushed it up. So they refined that. But yeah, it, it's, they came up and uh, I hate to tell the story from everywhere, but it's a funny story uh, because my dad was my agent and uh, I liked it. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it was, it was purely a functional, I mean, it was, I could see a purpose for it in a race. And it wasn't for me to wear around any town or anything, but it was for racing. Uh, yeah, when you're racing, you got debris, you have, your eyes are half the time are, you know, filled with dirt and debris. So uh, I liked them and, and we got into kind of discussing um, finance, financial aspects of it. And uh, I don't know what we asked for, but they, Jim didn't really have the money or kind of turned it down. They offered me equity and royalty and I, uh, somehow <laughs> we got 10 years in advance. And it's because I think Jim was transferring out of like the grips or <laughs> there was something that he was transferring out of grips goggles to grips and then he went to, uh, and I, I, I heard rumors that he mortgaged his house to pay me my $75,000 <laughs> over, that was three years in advance. Wow. <laughs> so I would have been much better off taking Who's the risk, risk on Oakley. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. So back in the mid-80s, I mean now we sort of take it for granted all the technology that's in, you know, these products, but back in the mid-80s it must have been a lot different. I mean this must have been a pretty cutting edge product. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But what, what I found fascinating was that um, uh, I was I went to Europe in a sport that was just this, the way they did it, and uh, I couldn't understand why they did it this way. And I always posed questions, and I to, just, yourself, to yourself or, or no to my team. Sure. It's like it was training. It was what you ate. It's could you sleep with your wife before race? Could they have me? Uh, Honestly, you know, I was just my teammate Eric Boyer was at my house uh, last week. Uh, and the debate and the battle over teams about having a wife around, even visiting. I mean, it was, I, I ref it wasn't even an option. I just said, no, I don't care what you say, fire me, let me go. I'm gonna have, you know, imagine you're being in to see your wife for 100 days, 150 days a year. Um, but I, 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 I was that type, I just never, it, when anybody told me, said I, it, my deal was like, if you tell me you can't, I would prove that I can. <laughs> And a perfect one was ice cream is bad for your, your liver. The French were always, and I'm like, what? I had two <laughs> bowls of ice cream before I won. I went out every night for a 10 day stage race to go to the Red Zinger Classic with my wife to be, movies, didn't sit in bed, had ice cream, and I was 18, crashed on the last day, but would have won it. And I'm like, why would that change two years later? I mean, it's. But anyways, but this is, you know, I, I, I go through all this equipment that came into cycling. It came from kind of people being inspired. I, not Jim, but I, even Jim, Jiro Hamas was, uh, uh, Jim Gentis, he went out with my sister. He got into bicycle design with Blackbird. And he saw an aerodynamic helmet from Renault. And he came to me with a, a hard shell helmet that was ANSI uh, approved. But I looked at it and said, I'm not going to wear a three pound helmet that has no ventilation. Literally grew up on a baby bell helmet, and that's how Giro started. <clears throat> but I was open to the safety aspect. It wasn't, I, that it, and it's not that I designed anything. This was, I, I just had the opportunity that somebody uh, like Oakley to approach me. And, uh, but most cyclists would never have even thought about it. It would have been, it would have looked too crazy. And so what were the repercussions on that? With, with the races? It's just more start? public yeah. humiliation. Hey, you gotta deal with that then. No, I, I remember in 85, uh, Honestly, my wife said, oh, God, don't even watch TV. It's just like, <laughs> they are, they're just railing on you. I could, qu'est-ce que c'est, qu'est-ce qu'il fait, on perd, 
we lose the vision of the cyclist. We, what is he doing? He looks like a clown with a helmet and a glass. That was 86. <laughs> I always remember my wife uh, was uh, at her house in Belgium watching the Tour de France stage, a stage with um, with Phil Anderson's wife and, uh, and a couple of Dutch, Dutch cyclists. And they were, the wives were laughing in front of my wife about, what the hell? He looks like an idiot. And unfortunately, the one wife's uh, husband had a crash, had a head, head injury. And uh, I think about two weeks later, the next year, everybody's wearing a helmet. And uh, same with glasses. The, the, uh, the adaptation, it was really interesting because Phil Anderson was training with me in uh, Sacramento and Dave Rogers approached me with a helmet. I mean, the uh, Oakwood. Yeah, we, my dad negotiated a contract for him. With Oakley. So it's literally started like viral marketing. I had a contract, Phil Anderson did, and then riders would want one, and all of a sudden everybody's handed them 